we're going to go over some numerical methods for solving differential equation IVPs. We're going to start with the Euler's method. Okay, the form of uh, differential equation we're going to solve, or IVP, is this form. dy dx equals f of xy on the right side. And we're usually given some initial condition. It's an initial value problem, so IVP, they give us an initial condition. Well, first of all, these methods are iterative methods. And what that means, it means we start with this formula here. We start with yn and we find the next y. And I'll explain what that means in just a short time. <clears throat> in this formula here, yn is the value of y. H is called the step size, and f of x and y n is this function here that's on the right side. So we're usually given some y at some value of x. For example, if you look at this example here, here's a de, dy dx equals 2x plus y, f of xy is 2x plus y. And they're telling us that y of 0 is 1. So our first value of x is 0, our first value of y is 1. So here, x0 is 0, y0 is 1. And this formula from x0 and y0 will allow us to find y1. Then what you do is you put y1 back on the right side here, and you get y2. Then you put y2 on the right side, and you get y3, etc. So we need the starting value of x, and this is the starting value of x. It's 0. We need 1 for y, which is 1. So, this formula gives you y n plus 1. That means the next y. So, if you know y 0, you can get y 1. If you know y 1, you can get y 2. If you know y 2, you can get y 3, etc. So, let's look at this IVP. Find, they want you to, uh, they, they're giving you this equation, and they want you to find y of 1. Okay. If we're asked to find y of 1, let's take uh, a value for h. So for now, I'm going to take point 0.1. And here's what step size means. We are given y of 0, we want y of 1. So to go from 0 to 1, how many steps do we want to take? Well, in this case, I want to take 10 steps. That means the step size is point 0.1. Okay. So our x0 was 0. y0 was 1. That was given. So, x1 is x0 plus h, which is 0 plus 0 0.1, which is 0.1. x2 is x1 plus h. So, that's the step size. So, every time you add one step size, you get the next x. So, that's 0 0.1 plus 0 0.1, which is 0 0.2. x3 is x2 plus h, which is 0 0.3. X, likewise, x4 is 0.4, and the same way, x5 is 0.5, etc. So our last value is x10, which is 1, and we want to know what is the value of y at 1. So here's the formula for Euler's method. yn plus 1 equals yn plus h f of xn yn. Here it is. Okay. So yn plus 1 is equal to yn plus h, which we pick to be 0 0.1, times f of xy, which is 2x plus y. Okay. We want y1 of x1. We can drop the x1. We can just call it y1. So y1 would be y0 plus h, f of x0, y0. Here it is. y1 equals y0 plus h times f of x0, y0. So y1 is y0, which was 1, that was given, plus 0.1 times 2 times 0 plus 1, because x0 was 0, and y0 was 1. When we calculate this, we end up with y1 equals 1.1. Likewise, y2 is equal to y1 plus h of x1, y1. Okay, f of x1, y1 is 2x1 plus y1. 
y1 plus h is 0 0.1 and then y1 was 1.1 so calculate this and you get y2 then y3 is y2 plus h f of x2 y2 and again f of x2 y2 is 2x2 plus y2 h is 0.1 and y2 was 1.3 that gives you y3 and you repeat this you put y3 back into the iteration formula the very first one this one you put y3 here that gives you y4 put y4 here that gives you y5 put y5 here that gives you y6 etc okay so this is what we get for y3 y4 y5 y6 y7 y8 y9 y10 y10 is y at x equals 1 that's what we were asked to find and it's equal to 3.78122738 we round it to 3.7812 and this is the approximate value of y of 1 which is what we're looking for so to recap we start with one value of x and, and the corresponding value of y. Using those two, plug them here, find the next value of y. But we do have the next value of x. Next value of x is this value of x plus h. Plug them here, you get y2. Plug y2 and x2 here, you get y3. Plug y3 and x3 here, you get y4, etc until you get what you're looking for for the step size the step size is very important and we picked the step size of 0.1 and we took 10 steps to get the value of y at x equals 1 if we had picked the step size of 0.2 we would need 5 steps but if we had picked a step size of 0 0.01 we would have needed 100 steps so how do we pick well we need to decide the smaller the step size the more steps you're gonna take but the smaller the step size the better the value that you're looking for because you're doing more calculations and there should be some kind of happy medium some kind of uh, I wouldn't say ideal step size but a good step size which gives you a good desired kind of accuracy the next method is called the runge cutter method the fourth order runge cutter method well this method involves more calculations first we calculate k1 k2 k3 k4 and then calculate the average some kind of weighed average of all of those which we call which we call k and then yn plus 1 is yn plus k but in order to calculate k2 we need k1 first because you put k1 here and our x for k2 is the previous x plus half of the step size our y is the previous y plus half of k1 next you use k2 to get k3 here's k2 and you use k3 to get k4 and once you have k1 k2 k3 and k4 k is one sixth of k1 plus 2k2 plus 2k3 plus k4 and then yn plus 1 is equal to yn plus k let's put this to uh, practice we're going to use the same example as earlier dy dx equals 2x plus y y of 0 equals 1 this time let's use a step size of h equals 0.2 so k1 is hf of x n y n which is hf of x0 y0 okay h is 0.2 f of x0 y0 is 2x0 plus y0 because this is f of xy x0 was 0 y0 was 1 so substitute those here and you get k1 equals 0.2 then put k1 here k2 is hf of all of this f of xy is 2 times x plus y all of this is y and this is x0 plus a half h this is y0 plus a half k1 
So x0 is 10, 0. H is 0. 0.2. Plus y0, which is 1, plus 0. 0.5k1, which is this. And that gives you 0. 0.26. Once you get k2, we need to calculate k3 and k4. Here's k3. So it's h times f of this. This is x and this is y. And f of x, y was 2x plus y. So it's 2 times this quantity plus 1 times this quantity. So it's 2 times plus 1 time. Put x0, which was 0. h, which is 0 0.2, y0. And then k2 was 0 0.26. Calculate all of this. And that gives you 0 0.266. K4 is H, F of X, Xn plus H, Yn plus K3. So, for our first line, it'll be H, F of X0 plus H, Y0 plus K3. F of X, Y is 2X plus Y, which is 2 times this plus this. So, it'll be 2 times 0 plus 0.2 plus 1 plus k3 which was 0.266 and this gives you 0.3332 next k is one sixth of k1 plus 2k2 plus 2k3 plus k4 here's the calculation for it one sixth times what we calculated and this ends up being 0 0.2642 and that's k so now we use the last line which is yn plus 1 equals yn plus k so the y we're looking for is y1 so y1 equals y0 plus k y0 was 1 that was given and then k is 0 0.2642 so this ends up being 1.2642 and all of this gives us just y1 okay here's the deal y1 is only the first line so here's how it works this is the same problem so i'm gonna go to the cave we have uh i did it with a different step size here i mean i asked to do it with a different step size but i'll draw another table with a step size of point if we were doing a step size of point one okay we've calculated this y once you know this y and this x you can calculate this y once you know this y and this x you can calculate this y and every time you know this y and this x you can calculate this y so these two numbers will give you this y these two will give you this one etc we're doing a step size of 0.2 so we're not doing these we're doing 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, and 1.0. Okay. So here's the calculation. I have it. Okay. We were given y of 0 equals 1. We substitute both of those. 0 and 1 and then we calculated k1 k2 k3 k4 and k and then 1 plus this k is equal to 1.264 so this would be y of 0.2 then you substitute this value of x and this value of y back into the equation for range kata into these equations you find k1 k2 k3 k4 k and then you you find the second y which is y2 then you plug in y2 and x2 back in these y2 and x2 calculate these five and then you get y3 and then y4 and y5 etc so here's what you end up with you plug in this x and this y to get this y you plug in this x and this y to get this y you plug in 0.6 and then this y to get the next y 
you plug in this x and this y to get this one and this would be y at x equals 1.0 so the value that we got is 4.1548 This value is different from what we got using the Euler method. Fortunately, we can solve this equation analytically. Most of the time when we apply these methods, it's because we could not find any other way to solve the equations. But this one we can. Here's the original equation. dy dx equals 2x plus y. Here it is. This is a linear first order equation move the y to the left side and we're going to use the integrating factor method p of x equals minus one the integrating factor mu of x equals e to the power integral of minus one dx which is e to the minus x multiply equation one by e to the minus x this is what you end up with the left side is the derivative of this product equals 2x e to the minus x so d of y e to the minus x equals 2x e to the minus x dx i'll rewrite it up here and integrate it integrate both sides so for the left side it's just y e to the minus x but this side here has x and e to the minus x so we're going to use integration by parts take the two out let u equal x and v prime or dv equals e to the minus x dx u prime equals uh, the derivative of x is 1 the integral of this is minus e to the minus x so the integral of 2x e to the minus x is 2 times it will be uv which is x times minus e to the minus x minus u prime v integral these two minuses cancel so this will be 2x e to the minus x times a minus minus and then the integral of this is minus e to the minus x times this two from the outside plus a constant okay so in three we've got y e to the minus x equals right side the right side is this integral which is this we need to multiply both sides of the equation by e to the power x so we can cancel all those e to the minus x's and here's the multiplication so you have y here it is y e to the minus x times e to the x equals minus 2x e to the minus x times e to the x minus 2 e to the minus x times e to the x plus c times e to the x make sure you multiply the constant by e to the x also okay all the e's cancel so you end up with y equals minus 2x minus 2 plus c e to the x this is the general solution let's rearrange the general solution put c e to the x in front so i'll put this in a box this is the general solution we want the particular solution this is an ivp y of zero is one when x equals zero y equals one so substitute zero for x and one for y so you end up with one equals c e to the zero minus two times zero minus two so one equals c times one that's zero minus two so c equals three put it back in there in the gs so y equals 3 e to the power x minus 2 x minus 2. so this is the solution i picked this example on purpose because this one we can check and compare the two solutions so now they want us to calculate y of 1 so put 1 in for x that'll give you 3 e to the power 1 minus 2 times 1 minus 2 and that's 4.1548 and this is just like what Ranjkata gave us. It's not always in this much agreement, but in this case, it is. So I'm going to recap what the Ranjkata method does. We're given an initial value of x and an initial value of y. We use both of those to calculate the next value of y. Use this x and this y to calculate the next value of y. Use this x and this y to calculate the next value of y. And keep going until you reach whatever you're looking for so if you're looking for y of one here's y of one if they wanted y of five you keep going with whatever step size you had used